the main point of my talk today is that the public debate over climate change in the United States, I'm willing to bet in Australia, is really a debate over values. It's not about CO2, it's not about climate models, it's about values, it's about beliefs, it's about worldviews, and how those influence the scientific data that comes forward. My name's Chris Wright, and uh, I'm a professor of organisational studies at the University of Sydney Business School, and I've been convening a symposium today uh, for the Sydney Network on Climate Change and Society, which has been looking at how uh, organisational responses to climate change are unfolding, particularly the role of business uh, in the climate change debate. We've had uh, three different sessions over the day. We began the day in our first session looking at the broader macro organisational uh, perspective on climate change. Now what this graph is showing you are the responses of those two groups of people to the question of who is responsible for climate change. And the options given here are big polluting countries, multinational corporations, wealthy countries, and so on, and so on. As firms have been looking at the future and looking at climate change, and again, the big firms, all of the big firms have been looking at climate change for at least 20 years. The oil companies, because it was a strategic issue, do you exist or do you not exist? In our second uh, session, we looked at specifically corporate perspectives on climate change and we were um, very lucky to have three speakers from uh, the world of business come in and explore uh, and explain uh, the different situations that their businesses face in relation to climate change. You begin to see how you can't look at carbon without looking at energy, without looking at water, without looking at land use in a much more integrated way than what, probably what we have traditionally. So with that type of driving force, this is no longer just a public policy issue, this is an economic issue. It also makes a meaningful contribution uh, to reduction of emissions for local councils, as you see there, depending obviously on the local government area, uh, anywhere between, say, a third and two thirds uh, of their emissions will generally be from street lighting. In our third session after lunch, uh, we focused on the, the topic of the more organisational, personal level perspectives around business and climate change. Uh, and we had three papers in that session, um, two of which looked at the issue of emotions and how managers and individuals uh, make sense of climate change through an emotional lens. In terms of the, the emotions themselves, um, people who felt enthusiastic, but as well as worried, um, and hopeful in relation to climate change, so they're the three emotions they felt most strongly, um, they then were more likely to engage in pro-environmental behaviours. So um, doing things around the office, whether it be reducing waste, energy, water, those sorts of things. That was followed by a panel discussion between Giles and uh, our guest for uh, this symposium, Professor Andy Hoffman from Michigan University, where they discussed the broad themes of um, the nature of the change, to what extent we need fundamental transformational change as opposed to simply incremental change. Because what they perceive to be the model for the energy industry three years ago is now dramatically changed. It just doesn't fit in there anymore. That's how quickly that transition is happening. To look at rational, scientific evidence. It was, it was the beginning of that fundamental shift in how we see the world. Is climate change that? Is it really changing our view? It's entering the Anthropocene? Is that akin to the Enlightenment? Is it that big? And, and overall, I think uh, it was a pretty uh, productive and successful day in which we were able to bring together a, a range of uh, stakeholders, uh, both practitioners from industry and also academics, uh, to share their learning and their insights around this most critical of issues, anthropogenic climate change.